So maybe we could start with this question, like, this, like through this, especially in women hating, which we've both been um, <laughs> looking at obsessively lately. She seems to kind of use the word woman and then the word female and then sometimes the word female is in quote marks and then it's like, um, I don't know, so first question I think I had was like, is she making a sex gender distinction at all and then how is she understanding? sex and also gender and like just like ah what's going on she starts the androgyny section by saying we want to destroy sexism that is whole role definitions of male and female man and woman yeah so i feel like that's it's really clear there that she's made she just seems to be making a straightforward sex gender distinction right yeah like sexism or male dominance is just the problem of assigning the definitions man and woman to the sex beings, male and female. Yeah, yeah. So that would just look like your standard kind of second wave distinction between binary sex and then this like social meaning of sex. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then at the end of that bit, right? Like just on the next page at the end of that section, um, she makes this remark, sexual freedom and freedom for biological mm. women or all persons, <laughs> quote mark, female, are not separable. I mean, I was like, what does she mean by, first of all, if you make a sex gender distinction, you don't usually say biological women. Yeah. You usually say female. And then <laughs> saying <laughs> biological women or all persons female, but then not even saying female, saying female. Like what? <laughs> what? Yeah. So I wonder, I wonder if what she's, if she's using the phrase biological women, instead of the phrase female deliberately because the phrase female or is so kind of loaded with loaded with the definition that's assigned to it right yeah so it's so much evokes like the feminine being or yeah. the woman or the like the resultant construct and she doesn't want us to think of that like because i guess that's what she's trying to do right like say we don't need to assign these definitions so she wants just to have like we, that means we can't have in our minds good yeah 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 so i see i think i see what you mean like there's just like so much social meaning already packed into female like all the all the things she wants us to get away from and so now she almost needs to coin a new term like just to refer to just the person with none of the meaning at all yeah that's right I so mean, maybe yeah. just like just the uterus and the vag and that would seem to be consistent with a lot of other work right where she's taught or like, and the rest of woman hating where she's talking so much about like the meaning of the cunt and yeah like the dirtiness associated with it yeah. i guess here she just wants to be like okay stripped of all that meaning yeah and so i suppose then she wants to be like okay to be clear when i say biological women what i'm talking about is your idea of female but i want to point out that it's your idea of female yeah like it's in it's like interesting because that's almost a point in favor of the that she is a tra that she was an early trans activist because I feel like a lot of the one of the talking points you get today from trans activists is like, oh well, we shouldn't call trans women male because the ideas of sex and the sex terms, they carry so much meaning that they're really close to the gender terms and then they would like that whole bundle of stuff counts as misgendering, and so it's like that's part of their argument for like suppressing or silencing talk about sex or just kind of being sex denialists um so it's sort of like i get what you're saying that she might have been wanting to do yeah. like how do we talk about just the body like just the person who yeah. is subordinated yeah. <laughs> what the, word the object to which the definition was assigned the thing that was there to begin with exactly yeah and how confident are we that she that the that that person like that group of persons is female people like taking her her work on the whole are we pretty confident that like how Dworkin like understood like the project of feminism was about female what we would call females i, I feel actually i feel really <laughs> confident yeah there's biological remarks, right? Like I revisited those chapters on prostitution and um, 
I think the story of O and then Suck are those the two yeah. chapters and I like clocked so many references to things like you know she oh. talks about like cunt and like yeah. hot wet slit or something it's like so much of it is clearly just describing female bodies and what what they're treated like yeah and in the um uh, is it woman as object or there's a chapter in pornography in where she's just um she's talking about how women are sexually used and violated um and there is a real there's a real there is a real sense in that of like the of the female body Mm. yeah right it, I find yeah. it, yeah. I mean, she would say it's the female body as men understand it. Yeah. Like, and she's right. Like she's right, of, of course. Um, but but it seems like well, this <laughs> the slit and all that, all and the kind and all those sorts of things. But like, the, they are attached to the v- vagina. Yeah. I guess, I suppose she would say even vagina. That has so much meaning in it too. Yeah. Yeah, it's tr- it, it, it's tricky. Like, just you read that stuff and it's so kind of, um, I don't know, it's so rage-filled, right, in describing how those bodies yeah. have been treated and then the, like, the involuntarism of just kind of being designated as this passive subordinate inferior dirty i think she says right like it's yeah and she has she owes us a story of like who that's happening to right you can't just have this abstract idea of like woman as a social kind or um yeah yeah and so 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 often there are these casual references to the body or the biology that make it clear it's female um but then that doesn't sit well with this contemporary idea that like she was a trans activist. I don't know. Um, yeah. No. Um, and, you know, I feel like in sort of, and in a lot of the, the imagery in, in the book Pornography, it's also, it's a, it's a kind, it's also, it's all about the shame, right? That people who have those aspects of, of that body feel, are made to feel. Yeah. Like that does seem, a, that seems a sexed reality, right? If you don't have a vagina, you can't know what it feels like to be treated as a cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was one interesting bit where she makes that parallel between some um, gay men. So I think it's in the, I think it's in the sub chapter where she's talking about the way that the subordination and use of gay men in these stories, like looks really similar to the use of women. So it's like um, kind of, yeah just like being fucked and kind of just used as a whole in the same way and how all the like sadomasochism is the same and how the stereotypes are kind of the same so there was one point i think where it sounded like she was actually saying that they are women like they're things to be fucked in the same way yeah where is it um i think she said yeah, one must conclude that being fucked in the ass separates the queers from the men and places them squarely among the women. And then I was like, okay, so maybe she is trying to make this more broad category of like the the to be fucked category. Which, which would fit with McKinnon's idea of what it is to be, or McKinnon's theory of gender and arguably theory of sex, right? Right. Um, but, but, but there does seem to, there does... It, it seems though like she's saying these males are treated as women, which seems different from females being treated as women. Yeah. Um, what's the, what's the, I mean, yeah, so there's a question about what the difference is. I mean, it's interesting, uh, you know, interesting to think about the experiential difference. Like if you're a male who's treated as a woman, does that, does that mean that you have this like real, uh, like how violating that is yeah because you have a sense of like that you shouldn't be treated that way you have a sense of entitlement whereas it seems to me that if you're a female being treated as a woman you're you're being treated as you ought to be yeah so you mean even just the like the resentfulness or the 
whether it feels like an injustice, um, yeah. they're going to be different. Yeah. It, or, that, that's my intuition. Yeah, it's interesting. And I think you're right to ask, like, exactly what is the parallel, right? Because she sort of, she seems to be saying there is this class woman and it has all these people in it. But then immediately after that, she was back to sort of just doing it like a metaphor. So it was like, yeah, the, yeah. the stereotypes are the same or um, the something where it was like clear that that the queers in, in this old fashioned sense are like women, not that the queers yeah. are women because. Yeah, they're, that's right. Yeah. They're, yeah. And there's or they're, they're sometimes treated as women. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's not clear that like, is it that it's not clear, I think, whether we want the concept the concept woman to pick out all the people who are at one point or another treated as women. Yeah. Well, that, you know. yeah, I think that's super interesting. And maybe that's exactly the, the thing I remember in um, Michael Bailey's book, the men who would be queen. It was one of the things that apparently a lot of people got furious about at the time. He talked about the differences between trans women in prostitution and women in prostitution and he, I can't remember if this was like, I don't know, I can't remember what the source was. Like, did he read some interviews? Did he talk to them himself? Like, uh, I'd have to check again. But it was like um, that there were certain trans women in sex work that just didn't experience it as stigmatizing at all. And this kind of blew my mind at the time because so much of the current narrative is like, oh, like trans women are so badly off, like there are lots of them are in prostitution. Yeah. And it's like assuming that that has the same meaning. But Bailey was saying that like one in particular that I guess he must have interviewed was saying that like she would ask on the phone for a description of how handsome the man was. And then, then when she was asked about whether she felt like degraded or used or dirty afterwards, she never did. And so right. it was like that that person is arguably being treated as a woman, like, fucked and and being kind of used as a whole but not experiencing it at all in the same way that a a woman would experience it no um, yeah perhaps because they've been socialized as a man exactly and i think bailey's thought was that um it's like the, the asymmetry between male strippers and female strippers right yes exactly yeah but you can honestly have it as much more kind of empowering i guess because it's a genuine option right it's like yeah. You can choose to do this thing on your own terms. And and also because the meaning of male sexuality isn't what the meaning of male sex or female sexuality is. Yes. You know? Yeah, exactly. I think one of the things that Bailey had said was that men in general just had a much higher appetite for casual sex. And that was another one of the reasons why it wasn't being experienced as degrading. Whereas all the social mm -hmm. meaning that's gone yeah. piled into women's sexuality like you're sluts if you're sexually yeah. liberal um so women are sort of feeling more used and discarded whereas these trans women w weren't feeling like that they were just feeling mm -hmm. like they had some sex <laughs> yeah. like yeah so i mean i'm sure that's not a universal experience in prostitution but it's it's kind of interesting just to think about that difference um however far it goes i guess yeah and so, sorry, coming back to the treatment point, maybe there's like, I don't know, I was sort of trying to, fi trying to figure this out earlier, like the, the way the woman is treated when she is seen like as a to-be-fucked object. And then there's like the gay men that Andrea's talking about in that part of the chapter, like that, I get, they're not treated as that throughout their whole lives, right? It's not pervasive. It's not systematic. Exactly. So they yeah. could maybe choose to be submissive in one encounter or like with a particular partner. Yeah. Actually, it seems like the use of the word role is a little misleading, right? Because so I know, so feminists have used the language of sex roles, right? Like Andrea uses it. Um, but it seems like playing a role in a moment or for a half an hour, an hour, women are no, or females have been assigned the role woman are no longer playing, a, that is who they are. Yeah. They're no longer playing a role. It's not, a temporary thing you can't cast the role aside yeah Whereas yeah yeah like some of those other cases it's, it's more of a literal role playing yeah yeah no i think that's right and even if the like even if it was involuntary in the moment it might still matter that it's momentary right like maybe yeah. there's a particularly dominant uh gay man and then there's an encounter between two 
gay men and this person's kind of pushed into a subordinate position, it's still like it ends when the sexual encounter ends, right? It's not, it's not going to affect him in the workplace. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And then and like, it might not, affect, not, might not affect him in some other ways, right? Like when he goes or, you know, going to the police and reporting it, like they, they might not just dismiss it in the yeah. way that they would a woman. Yeah. Or in court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Seems like question. so much of what surrounds it. Yeah. Different. Agreed. And I guess then going back to the the trans issue, because that's like already just the comparison between women and then some gay men. Then there's this question about like those of the trans women who are motivated by wanting that subordination like what Andrea Long Chu talks yeah. about in females even if she gets what she wants and she is treated like that it just looks bizarre to put her together with maybe some gay men but definitely women to talk about this like social treatment as object to be fucked because it's like she wasn't designated as an object to be fucked she was designated as a person who could fuck yeah and then she found it and, like and in fact with that position then has the authority exactly yeah yeah exactly can just like the decide to demand yes and then to... has bent the world in that way such that now she can have this position that she desired but she chose it yeah. and she actively obviously finds it very like arousing to be in it and then so yeah. I just find it bizarre to think like we would now want to group those trans women together with women when it's just completely different in terms of it also wouldn't fit you know I was saying or I think we had in mind before um Mc McKinnon's understanding of gender or sex yeah. but it doesn't fit with the second part of her understanding which is that um women are def the, the people who are defined by the expropriation of their sexuality yeah so they're not just people who occupy the sexually subordinate position. There are people who have had that that imposed on them. Yeah, right. Good. That's really helpful, actually. So then it's just not going to be the case that anyone who has found it appealing and deliberately yeah. kind of transitioned into this category um, can claim that position. So it seems like then a story would need to be told about why it's not voluntaristic. Yeah. Like for those, you know. But even if it wasn't, would that help? Because it's still not that like, it's not that men are picking out people like Andrea as well mm. as it's, it, as well as women, um, and then subjecting them to that treatment. Yeah. So even if Andrea is like born this way, aroused by sexual yeah. subordination as a woman, and then. Ha can't help yeah. but transition yeah. to a acquire that um, yeah. I'm still not sure that's going to meet the you know yeah or maybe even was was treated at some definitive point in her life as the to be fucked one and acquired this self conception yeah, yeah that's a, it's a good point even so you're not likely to be subject to all the things that come with having a female body yeah I guess would, would the pushback be it's not it's not about you're not subject to those things on the basis of having a female body you're subject to those things on the basis of being perceived as female on the basis of being perceived as feminine yeah I think maybe you could get something going after there'd been a convincing transition right um yeah. so then there's the usual questions about how long that has to be going on for and how much that yeah. makes you the same but yeah if 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 there's a convincing transition I guess you are going to be treated in all the ways that female people are treated um and then there's just i think some theoretical question about the benefits of like how we identify the class because if it's like yeah i just noticed we don't do this anywhere else in philosophy we'd never be like oh it's like like it's not jewish people that were targeted during nazi germany it was like people with the physical markers of being perceived as a jew in you know what I mean? Like, we don't do these stupid right. sentences designed yeah. to be inclusive of anyone who might also feel like they too were a Jew. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, I guess for me, I've just been like, I, d I just get antagonized. Maybe it's like the slip from what does it take to be a member of the class? Like, what does it mean to be female? And I think the language of class is really helpful too, right? Right. 
just like I guess consistent with what I was saying before about it being imposed on you yeah but is that right that there's this two-step thing it's like like who's Jewish like okay interesting question like who's Jewish what's the conception yeah but then like you have your conception and then you can say Jewish people were targeted in these historic moments and I just somehow feel like in feminism we make this mistake of like who's in the class and then how was that class treated at particular moments like in what ways were they vilified or subordinated and then we would never be like oh well at least one person who wasn't actually Jewish was also subordinated in Nazi Germany and uh, yeah and therefore actually it's not Jews who yeah. were so it was people assumed on the basis of particular physical markers sorry just do yeah. the Sally Haslinger line but like I just feel like we don't do that for anyone else that like we don't say such stupid sentences about African Americans or Jews or gays we just we know who we mean and we know that even when it wasn't that all of them were targeted like some people were targeted because they were assumed to be them but they weren't yeah. and some people who were weren't targeted because they could pass as not being but it's like yeah. that's just yeah. fucking complexity right it's like it doesn't show they weren't being targeted for being gay and it's like the gay part that matters <laughs> like yeah. but why don't we do that with women instead we're like oh my god at least one male person who was perceived as a woman was targeted therefore we better get a whole new conception of what the oppression consists in i don't like, know i mean i think that there are so many things feeding into it right and i guess one of them is a worry about uh, about biology or about making claims about biology right and thereby reinforcing because of the role that's played in women's subordination is that you know, I, I I feel like there's come to be in feminism this like ickiness about biology. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think that I also think that's I, I kind of remember sympathetic to that. There is a way in which that's well, like it does seem to me that if we get rid of if we stop doing like assigning the definitions, female people might turn out to be so so different. You know, di- like different different in ways that are maybe like irreconcilable with our current concept of female good but so this is going towards the like andrea's vision of the like androgynous pansexual like we're all just humans society and then yeah. wondering in that society what would the female <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the people previously known as females like what might they be like like what yeah. how much might that change yeah i think that's really interesting um but there's a question about how, like, it's, yeah, so we're talking about that as the future, not the present, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but do you reckon that's why, do you think that's sort of roughly what she had in mind, and then that's why she goes for this strategy of, um, yeah, like in the other video, I think I talked about the, we are a multi-sexed species, yeah. and what we thought was male and female is actually not discreet, it's on this, like, spectrum and you know all this work to like disrupt yeah. and implode and the fact that the fetus doesn't develop the chromosomes because i was like where's that like, what does that get you yeah i know yeah <laughs> develops the chromosomes yeah it's just like throwing all these little bombs at sex and being like hopefully one of these will yeah. <laughs> and then she's like maybe maybe parthenogenesis that's <laughs> like oh my God. and if, you, if we do that enough we end up with like no categories right yeah yeah of yeah. anything i mean yeah no, it's true. If you if you thought... like there must be some koalas without pouches and stuff like that. <laughs> but you know, like if we try hard enough. No, you're right. If we took the if, if we... everything's like pan whatever. <laughs> yeah, the okay, use cool. the use that like intersex cases are put to, and the use that like vagueness or variation is put to. For sex, if you did that to other categories that were as clear as sex, you're right, you'd have nothing left. Yeah. Um, so what's the interesting point? Yeah. Or like, what are we, are we really making a point about sex here? Yeah. But maybe, but I think your previous point was interesting that, like, if she thinks we couldn't have a society in which we still acknowledge sex difference, like, there's no way to make that yeah. better. It's just like, we're going to be frustrating human potential for as long as we are naming that thing. So yeah. let's stop naming it. Stop I mean, naming it. There's something to that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, it would. It seems hard to think about how else we go, right? 
like if we if we feel like female is like so loaded yeah. that as soon as we point out that or learn that a baby is female yeah we treat it in particular ways it does like yeah what, what do we do yeah but then there's a, i mean i guess there's like there's so many points of objection right because one is just like what are the alternatives because I, th- I feel like so many of the second waivers were were kind of like this like i keep getting shocked just discovering more and more of them like down with sex and it's like yeah. what are you really talking about here and is that really what you mean um because i think that is being taken up in modern trans activism and maybe like it's not quite what they meant they didn't quite mean the same thing but then there's all this feasibility stuff right like can we really actually ever get a world where genital differences let's say are not salient like we fucking reproduce and have children and that's how the species is continued yeah like, right but i mean i, I think they're just gonna say you know like Wittig and um tigress atkinson that they're not just talking about gender maybe they would say okay that's what we should we should swap talk of sex for talk of gender di- of, sorry of genital differences or right um like these little specific things that are relevant in whatever the context or case is Oh, good. I see. So you mean we we do kind of um, blow up sex as this like big concept that's feeding and everyone has all this meaning. Yeah. But then we can just be like, penis people, <laughs> vulva people, like da 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 da. We need them yeah. for sex sometimes. Yeah. Um, or I was thinking you, about yeah. it when I was when I was talking to my students about sort of on this topic, and one of them who's maybe a biomed student um, said something about like the importance of retaining the concept of female for the purposes of, or like, I think she's talking about how successful we've been in treating or preventing cervical cancer. Mm. And I thought, I guess the objection would be like, well, we don't need the concept female. We just need something, we just need a name for people who have cervixes. Yeah. I actually had exactly this um, kind of discussion with Nicole Vincent when we were doing the recording for the feminism course. Because she was like, yeah, we could just have all these scattered ones it's like yeah. you've got a concept of like a, a vulva haver for sex purposes and then you've got a cervix haver for medical purposes and then you've yeah. got a, like a, a, these symptoms for heart attack person for medical yes. but then i was like but then it totally obscures what these people all have in common right it's like, oh, I was gonna say, like <laughs> hey, wait a second oh, who is, who's all the people in each of these groups oh it's always the same people exactly so oh, like, shortcut let's name them exactly i know but but maybe i guess the the objection still might be but that's necessary as the transit right like we still want to get away from all the other baggage yeah so oh you mean like even if <laughs> Good. Like you're like heart attack symptoms yeah. and the... name them all separately like heart attack guy a heart attack guy b <laughs> genital yeah. a genital b whatever yeah. but but mix up the variables so we can't just be like all oh, these b guys look awfully oppressed <laughs> <laughs> and then after like 50 years when we've gotten away from the negative social meanings of sex yeah. we can reintroduce <laughs> the b guys <laughs> <laughs> and then we will have like reduced its content to being just this package of <laughs> cervix, heart attack, vulva. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you might be right. Like that's a way to like outpace the social meaning. Like, um, I don't know. But then what, what do you, yeah. What do you say to the person, like just the standard gender abolitionist who's like, stop it with the sex stuff all the time. Like that's just like that stuff does have minimal meaning it is just the body and the the cervix and the heart attack and the whatever um and we re- really need to just like fight this social meaning head on do they have are they just missing something really important or is this all just talking past each other based on like what counts as sex and what counts as gender no i feel like there is something being missed and i've been thinking about it recently but i don't know how to articulate it but about the way in which like the the meaning sort of does carry biology with it or something right like yeah so what about what about the people being with with vaginas being treated as sex objects and having their legs spread and you know talking about people with cervixes and that's i yeah for me because i'm just like such a militant gender abolitionist but not sex <laughs> then i would want to just say that's gender right it's like how have we come in this like porn saturated like sexual yeah. enslavement culture to view female people then we see them as these to be fucked people like i feel like so much of mckinnon's and dawkins 
analysis is getting something right about the the last however many thousands of years social concept of women but it's like i want to say women really have nothing to do with that like that's not that's a man's yeah creation and a man's projection and he should fuck off but she's still there like you know like and so somehow i just feel like maybe i'm being naive about how much it's possible just to pick out her as she is in herself um and call all that other stuff gender maybe some of that stuff is sex and i'm not being generous enough to like what counts as sex and what counts as gender and what we need to abolish Um, and i guess if you think about you know the way mckinnon talks about how men's projection has made itself true yeah like what is left of those (laughs) the projection is the thing but even if the but why couldn't we say isn't it though that when so when when people are saying like sex what there's no such because i don't i mean i don't think I guess there's different ways, there's different meanings to the claim, like there's no such thing as. Like, I feel like when Dworkin's talking about it, does she need to be saying there is now no such thing? Couldn't she, like, as I understand, I guess, Atkinson or Wittig, and I think doesn't Wittig in fact say this, that sex is made? Right? So when, so the claim that, like, there's no such thing as is the claim there's no such, like, naturally occurring thing as. Yeah. Right? And I, you were talking about this earlier. Like, okay, there might, we need to be careful maybe about like the slippage here right because maybe there's no such natural like there's no naturally occurring thing but if it's being made and we want to get rid of it then we need to recognize that in order to attack it and get rid of it yeah that's really helpful that in is, fact yeah. to say it doesn't exist is just a pretend yeah this is like the same mistake people make about social construction right they're like money isn't real but it's like well yeah. maybe it's not real in the sense that it's not like a tree but we've certainly made it up now and it's pretty well entrenched. So you can't just be like, like no I more money. Our lives, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Which I guess is maybe what I was getting at with like, se- just to say sex doesn't, it just, it does, I think it feels wrong in the sense, like I don't, sometimes I think maybe we radical feminists don't need to appeal to biology. Like sex is real in the sense that like women's lives are governed by it. Yeah. We can't think our way out of it. But I, but it's like, how does the radical feminist you know, because I feel like so, like our language, who who are we fighting for? That thing needs a name, right? Yeah, <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. And we are adamant about, like, we have a pretty good understanding of what that class is, like, and we use female people to pick it out because it's it's the people with the, the large gametes <laughs> bodies, like, throughout history. And we all know how to pick those people out. And men have certainly done a great job of picking them out. Um and so we need to be able to like name our class and fight for her rights. Yeah. So I guess okay. The thing is though, so on the use of the word class though, so isn't so McKinnon and Eddie Dawkins are going to say it's not the females that are the class; it's the women who are the class. The females are the people who get put in the class. I know, but then that just buys into this like split between how we use female and how we use woman, where woman became the role, right? And I think red femmes, at least a lot of us, we want to deny that as well. Like, there's just these female womany <laughs> bodies. And those people, for thousands of years, have been subordinated. Now, chuck out all the social meaning of, or like, you know, let's try to make them not a class anymore or yeah. a caste. But yeah. we're still going to have you and I, female women people, right? Where, yeah. I don't know, I think a lot of the second, like some of the second waves and maybe loads of the feminists today, they want to be like, you know, Haslinger saying we need to get rid of women. And Tigrace actually, I think, says that yeah. we need to uh, abolish women. And it's like, they mean get rid of the social role, right? But like, we're still going to need words, aren't we? Aren't we? Maybe we're not. Maybe we're all just humans after that. I just feel like, don't we need words still to talk about the periods people? <laughs> the yeah, but I guess like why is that I suppose wouldn't I mean maybe that's what Dawkins would say too once we've over the horizon maybe those people won't be called women or but was that really the problem like that's why like, that's why like with trans activism it's like right. so was the, that, that the mean problem? you think the problem is like the bio, biology no it's that I think the problem is like how 
this particular group of people have been treated and continue to be treated and all our cultural ideas about her. And then I just feel like we can get rid of that and work to get rid of that. Yeah. And it doesn't have anything to do with the word woman or the word female yeah. or the word sex or the concept sex. Yeah. And we can reduce... Fact, you know, if you think about, doesn't Mark say you have the class that's to become, a, the working class has to become a class for itself? What does that mean? <laughs> Um, um, it's doing like acquiring consciousness of yourself as a class right. in pursuit of your liberation. Right. But wouldn't that, yeah, wouldn't that suggest too that there is a way? Look, like, we you can't just throw the concept out. Like women have to become. I think we can. Say, women have to become a sex for themselves. Yeah, I mean that definitely seems like an important part of the like the reclamation and the liberation project, right? Like yeah. you do. And who do we women want to be? Yeah. So then we will we'll remain women. Yeah, right. but it, maybe that's actually an interesting thing that's part of the but fight. Maybe it's the star, you know? Well, because is this the issue between some feminists at the moment? Like, some think the only way that you can, like, when you decide what we want to be, you're going to decide that there has there's no definition and therefore we have to refuse all definitions and that's why we've ended up in this stupid situation where now men are women. And then some of us want to say... No, we get to decide, and yeah. what we're deciding is female people. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I do think about that, right? We haven't talked about that question. What about the question of who gets to decide? Yeah. You know, isn't that, and given that, it, you know, if, if women have been denied self-determination, yeah. if who we are is who men have said we are, Yeah. then it's, we're not going to become free until we redefine ourselves, until yeah. we take that into our own hands. Agreed. But do you think we can redefine ourselves? Do you think the redefinition has to be a new concept that has borders? Or do you think they might be right that it can be refusing all meaning and definition whatsoever? No, well, no because <laughs> I think that we have to have... The, the de I think the definitions shape us. It's just that some shape us... For the bad yeah yeah i don't know what it means to say get rid of all definitions i know but i think what you just yeah, said that's great we, yeah why but, we, what do we model ourselves on yeah but that's that's exactly the problem right we've become nothing because they say we've been defined by men for thousands of years we refuse to be defined and now no because they have no to be defined by other people. but that's not what they say they <laughs> say men. they say we refuse to be defined right. and now they have to accept Anyone who identifies as a woman right. is a woman because there's yeah. no such thing as what it means to be a woman. And we, I think, want to say... Right. And, like, yeah, men have policed the concept woman, but that's not all... Like, that's completely asymmetrical with women policing the Self-determining. Agreed. I know. I yeah. find it completely maddening. Yeah. And then we have a coherent... We are the ones who are entitled to please that concept. I yeah. don't want to use, I shouldn't use that language, please, that's not what I mean. No, but I mean, we get to self-determine, right? Yeah, that's right. And then particularly if we are trying to self-determine, we come up with a coherent definition, female people, we say we don't want any of the bullshit social meaning that's been attached to that for ages. And then men, leftist men, men who identify as women, and some feminists are like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you're self-determined yeah. not like that not like yeah. that yeah <laughs> like... i know but Ireland fry has this nice line about women being really queasy about taking power mm -hmm. or like seizing authority and i guess i'm just thinking about this in the context of work where she talks about the importance of women kind of take like assuming some semantic authority mm -hmm. you know authority over the term woman yeah good and i think yeah it's, it's part of that what's like it's part of that what's going on here you mean you think it's that like, it's who are we to police the concept like, <laughs> oh, I see. You think it's no. not so much, they're not so much like asserting this no definition as our definition. You think they're like abdicating. Yeah. 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 Or it's a, yeah, a, a fear or, a, yeah, a fear of seizing some authority, right? Yeah. It's like what it is. <sighs> and then maybe in better moments, I get that because, like, yeah, men are, but that, that as you said, it's an abdication. This is, Abdicating yeah. responsibility. And at a certain point, like even if you thought, oh, it's really important just to like refuse all definition because then we can never be locked in again, you might still pay attention to what's happening once you've done we that. You're also locked out of everything. Yeah, like they should surely be able to notice, oh fuck, now heaps of blue haired men 
are also women and now the feminist movement is imploding and it's become a general global justice movement maybe and maybe something high. has gone wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. how are they not just checking in on the implications of that decision and then being like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about this, and there seems to be a tension too, right? Because on the one hand, you know, we were talking before about like this, um, oh, well, there's this suggestion, like there's no such, this pointing to lots of things and being like, not all women have them, so there's no such thing as women. But then if there's no such thing as women, then why do some men get to count? There seems to be a bit of a contradiction, kind of, or trying to like have it both ways. Yeah. On the one hand, get people into the group who haven't been in it by saying there's really no such thing, there's no group. Yeah. And then also saying, or implying that there is a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, trans women are women being militantly uh, enforced as a as a mantra certainly carries the implication that there's something that it means to be a woman. Yeah. Um, but if you ask them for a definition, they they can't and won't give one. And yeah. I think, and from what I've read, part of that is like, yeah, this deliberate resisting of being defined because that's what men have done. I just, yeah. I just find it so mental. Um, so maybe if we come back to our starting question to wrap things up, like, do we think Andrea was a trans activist or not? Like, can they fairly claim her or can we fairly claim her? Because, like, I'm sure um, as a lot of people have talked about, you know, her um, partner wrote that piece that was like, yeah, she was a trans activist and she would be so... I can't remember how to quote it, but it was something like if she was alive today and could see what the rad femmes like invoking her name to enforce this kind of biological view of women, she'd just be absolutely horrified. <laughs> it was something like that. Um, oh yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, I do think that maybe she would um, admit that there's a, or would allow that there could be a group of people perhaps who aren't biological females who've maybe like been systematically sexually objectified or something and they could go in there but that seems a very different phenomenon from what we're seeing you mean she might think if someone passes as female and then is treated as female people are we might as well count them in the class for the purposes of talking about women and feminism yeah yeah right but then that's not i think it analysis could admit that yeah but... yeah which doesn't seem so problematic um no, I mean, it still might be problematic in certain contexts, right? Yeah. Um, or in, you know, affirmative action in certain domains. It's also tricky to know how far it goes, right? Because you're going to get people who pass as female until the bedroom. Um, yeah. If yeah. they haven't transitioned surgically. And then yeah. if so much of women's subordination actually depends on the sexual act and they can't be yeah. treated and, in that and way. It, and it happens, right, in that in that domain. That yes. was the contribution of second wave feminism or radical feminism. Yeah. So no. unless she thinks in all such cases, yeah. merely in virtue of passing as female, you would end up being subordinated. You know, like if there really is always this dominant subordination relation and it's just about who goes in what which camp, maybe we're supposed to assume any encounter between a man and a passing trans woman is always going to be subordinating in the same way like i don't know regardless of whether that person mm -hmm. is then revealed to to be male um maybe that could still go through but otherwise then i think you're going to get complications for like what about the non-passing trans woman who has surgically transitioned <laughs> and then so like the the treatment up until the point is going to come apart from the the actual like constitutive stuff in intercourse i don't know um i wonder if also she would think it's okay like or in in the spirit of sort of um of seizing some semantic also it's it's okay we, we can admit some people yeah but that but like that's what that act is right we are admitting some people yeah which is and it's not necessarily the same thing as saying we think that you are the same just yeah for certain purposes or given our analysis of sex-based depression yeah that's true that's that's helpful we'll include you in the constituency yeah like if this is a core thing we're worried about then we have this slightly broader class yeah. um doesn't mean there's no differences between people in the class that's right but then do you think do we both agree that like even if we can get that far we can never get so far as 
merely self-identifying male-bodied male presenting people who claim a woman gender identity yes like i can't see how draw can especially you know she talks so much about the penis and you know i think she would i, I was gonna say i think she'd be horrified but I, also i think maybe she wouldn't be surprised by all this like you know suck my pe- you know suck my dick kind of stuff going on yeah yeah suck my girl dick yeah yeah. yeah no I agree I find it I just wonder maybe even when Stoltenberg wrote that essay was he really because so many people today get that wrong like they really do not understand how modern trans activism yeah. has changed and the difference between merely self-identifying transgender and transsexuals yeah like even that recent court case um the Australian uh Beth Rep case the judge referred to like the emotional hardships of surgery and something else and I was like I don't know if Bridget Clinch is actually transsexual. Yeah. Um, but so there was this assumption that like, because that person had a gender identity, they were transsexual. And I was like, that, yeah. that's just not true anymore. Um, I think it's like 88% aren't. <laughs> so I, I, think, just... I think you're right. I think there's now, or like the concept, that's why asking the question itself is hard, right? Like, is she a trans activist? I, I mean, her, her concept now might be is really outdated, I suspect. Yeah, yeah. So like, she might've said yes. Yeah, good. So maybe from everything we've said and from what we know about her politics, she we could even just generously say she would count transsexual women as women, given what we can expect about the the subordination and the intercourse. Um, But she's there's no way of plugging in male, merely self-identifying people into that analysis. Yeah. So she's not a trans activist by current terminology. Yeah. Um, Yeah. 